What is this evil eye? What is Al Ain? Is it a reality? Is it superstition? Well, uh, the Prophet ﷺ has said in authentic hadith, Al Ainu Haq. Al Ainu Haq. That the evil eye is true. Al Ainu Haq. The evil eye is true. And uh, this story of Yaqub as well proves it that there is a reason why he does not want his 11 children to enter together. Why? All of these are sons. And for one man to have 11 sons is a big blessing and honor, especially at that time. Especially at that time when sons are of great value. So these are all full brothers. Not only that, they are all the children of Yaqub, and they're all very handsome. Right? Yeah, they're all very handsome, and they're all from a foreign race. Uh, uh, that is a race of the uh, Bani Israel. It's a new race now. The race is just starting now. The Bani Israel, right? The Israel is Yaqub. So this is a new race that is starting, a new ethnicity. And they are, mashallah, young, powerful, strong men. Who's not going to get jealous amongst the people of Egypt when they find this new race and they're all speaking a, a language, looking different, dressing differently. So he's worried about Ain. What exactly is Ain? There's only like five or six hadith about Ain. And there's indirect references in the Qur'an to Ain. Uh, and put together, we as Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah believe that there is a reality called Ain. Some of the progressives or modernists, they don't like anything that their mind doesn't understand, so they deny it. But Ain seems to be very true and real from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah. As from the Qur'an, we have a clear verse in the Qur'an that we seek refuge, وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا hasad, Right? And if the hasad of the hasid had no effect, why should we care about seeking Allah's refuge in it? Let me repeat. The very fact that we seek Allah's refuge from the evil of the hasid when he has hasad shows us that when a person is jealous, hasad means a burning jealousy. When a person is jealous, there is an evil that will affect. So what is al ain? Al ain is the negative consequences of jealousy. The negative consequences of jealousy. And it is called ain from the eyes. Because the number one reason to get jealous is when you look at something. But ain has nothing to do with the eyes. Because you can hear about something and get jealous. You don't have to necessarily look at it. It's not like an invisible uh, uh, Superman beam of ray that comes out. Right? This is not Al Ain, okay? Al Ain is the feeling of the heart. Al Ain is a burning jealousy. And it has to be a burning jealousy. This is a jealousy that only an evil person allows this jealousy to go unchecked. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that jealousy destroys good deeds, like a fire destroys twigs, or like, uh, or like that herb destroys honey. Uh, the, I forgot the herb, but the, some type of herb destroys honey. It, it makes it corrupt, right? So, Jealousy destroys hasanat. The mu'min will never allow the jealousy to go unchecked. Because jealousy is a filthy feeling. That even when you feel jealous, you feel filthy. Why am I feeling like this? Jealousy is a filthy feeling. And it's only the evil person who allows jealousy to go unchecked. And what happens when you allow jealousy to go unchecked? Somehow, it causes an effect on the object of jealousy. How? Scholars have differed, as I said, the evidences are very little about Ain. But one hadith seems to suggest that that jealousy empowers shaitan. It gives some type of fuel to shaitan. And shaitan can then use that, because shaitan wants to harm. Shaitan can then use that fuel to get to the other person. And this seems to be uh, the, the, the most logical, rational, and also hadithi interpretation. That how can just jealousy affect somebody? How can it do it by, by that? Well, it could if Allah has decreed. We're not denying that. But it seems, and there are riwayat that show this, that jealousy feeds shaitan. And, and the jinn, basically. When the shayla, I say shaitan, I mean the jinn. The evil shaitan, the evil jinn, the shayateen. And when you have so much jealousy, then you basically empower some of the jinns to go and harm the other person. It gives them the motivation, it gives them the fuel they need to go and harm the other person. So, the Prophet wasallam in an authentic hadith in Sahih Bukhari, and this is one of the most authentic hadith about Ain, he would seek refuge in Allah from the Ain. He would seek refuge in Allah from the Ain. This hadith is in Bukhari. And so he would say, and the dua is in Bukhari, Allahumma inni a'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tam. I seek refuge in the perfect uh, speech of Allah.
من كل شيطان وهام from every shaytan and from every uh, creature that harms hamma is like a scorpion a snake right wa kullu shaytan wa hamma wa min kulli ayn lam and from every critical or jealous eye so three things are being sought refuge in shaytan and creatures now of course in the desert creatures of course we still seek refuge here but i'm saying in those days you're worried about scorpions you're worried about snakes you're about all of these animals and that's uh ham and wa min kulli ayn lam and from every ayn that will criticize that will be jealous so the prophet is seeking refuge in al ayn and in hadith in abu dawood and um, ahmad imam ahmad musad he said al ayn haq ayn is true it's a reality so i think two words is a hadith al ayn haq don't deny it. it's not superstition is the point it's a reality al ayn haq so we believe in ayn How do we protect ourselves from ayn? Uh, again, this is a different topic, but it is important. So four things. Four things to protect ourselves from ayn. The first one I've already mentioned. What is that? Dua. Dua. What duas are there? Well, I just told you two duas. Extra recitation of Surah Falaq. And also this particular dua of Sahih al-Bukhari. So from the Quran, from the Sunnah, we always regularly seek protection from ayn. Number two. What else can we learn right now? We already there's a lesson right here. What should we do to protect ourselves from ayn? Don't be flashy. Don't want to show off what Allah has blessed you with. Be cautious. No point. You're going to cause yourself harm. The mu'min is not to show off, right? Now the mu'min might have a lot of blessings. The 11 sons are blessings, right? If you have wealth, alhamdulillah, live the lifestyle that's halal, alhamdulillah. But there's no point flaunting it, right? There's no point making people feel jealous of it when you do so not only if you do it intentionally you are under sin right if you do it intentionally you are sinful and whether you do it intentionally or not you will bring about people's jealousy and there's no point doing that so the second thing is to take reasonable uh, precautions that uh, now even though of course taking reasonable precautions will not guarantee protection from ayn because even yaqub says wala unaikum min allah this is not going to protect you against allah i do what i can but it's not going to protect you completely the third thing uh is that if you yourself feel jealous if you yourself feel the beginnings of jealousy get rid of that jealousy by making dua upon the one whom you feel jealous for and the best dua that the scholars say is masha allah tabarakallah right and the evidence for this is surah al-kahf and the people of the two gardens walawla idh dakhalta jannataka qulta masha allah la quwwata illa billah right uh, that the evidence that they say from this is surah al-kahf that don't now this man he was feeling ujub not not ain but nonetheless it's, it's the parallel this the companion he's feeling proud he's feeling oh masha allah i got all of this stuff man it's all mine No don't say it's all mine. Masha Allah la quwwata illa billah. Take it give it back to Allah. Right? La quwwata illa billah. So when we feel jealous and subhanallah who amongst us cannot have some fleeting fleeting jealousy. We see somebody uh masha Allah wealthy or uh driving that uh, fancy car or living in that uh, mansion right or primarily for the sisters it's about beauty what so they get jealous for right they see or a good marriage as well somebody who's happily married any yani it's something human nature that a fleeting emotion runs by your heart the mu'min seeks refuge kills that and if it doesn't go away mashaallah mashaallah la quwwata illa billah make dua for the person and the scholars say by the way the scholars say that whoever causes ayn will be accountable on the day of judgment because you allowed the hasad to grow right and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that hasad eats up your good deeds if you let it grow so don't think that just because you have ayn uh, you know it's just a feeling in the heart no uh, some feelings of the heart are accountable by allah and this is one of them i'm going into the tension of ayn because I know it's something everybody has questions about and you rarely f- hear people talking about it. So I'm going a little bit of a tangent. I know uh, this was intentional. It's not one of my unintended tangents uh, uh, about this topic. So uh al-ayn as we said, the person who has it will be sinful on the day of judgment. 
Because he allowed the jealousy to grow. And generally speaking, fleeting jealousy does not cause ayn. It is sustained jealousy. It is jealousy that grows days and months and years. And wallahi, only a filthy heart can allow this jealousy to grow. Only a filthy heart. And when it grows and it becomes so corrupt and wicked, somehow the shayateen seem to get some power and they love, then they can just, they're, they're fueled. Allah knows their world, how it works.